Mobile County Public Schools presents Homeroom. Hi, and welcome to Homeroom, where we introduce you to the students and the educators who make Mobile County Public Schools the best school district in the state of Alabama. I'm your host, Renee Phillips, and today we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite things that we do throughout the year in Mobile County Public Schools. We recognize our learning leading students, and what that is, these are students selected from each of our 90 schools who exemplify our slogan of learning today leading tomorrow. Each school picks a winner and from that the county picks an elementary winner, middle winner, middle school and high school winners. And so we're going to introduce you to those students today. But first I want to show you what it's like when we name the winners we surprise them at our school. So we have a video that we're going to take you to Dodge Elementary School to show you when we surprised Abigail Davis. So here's the video. Hi! Hi. So we have a special to make. So you are selected as your school's Learning Leading Award winner, which means you're a learner and a leader here, which is awesome. But also, did you know that we have 50 elementary schools in Mobile County? No. We do. And each school picked one Learning Leading winner. And from that, all those 50 kids, we picked one for the whole county. And that's you, Abby. <gasps> nominated Abigail because she is such a bright light here at Dodge. She's always willing to help others, not just in the classroom, but outside of the classroom. Um, she's a big part of our school on the morning announcements and on the robotics team and archery. So she does a lot and she keeps her grades up and she'll do anything you ask her to do. Well, I think what makes me a good leader is that I'm kind and I always try to do my best in everything I do. That was so fun when we interrupted your PE class. What did you think when we all walked in? Well, I thought I was getting paste dusted. <laughs> you did. That's funny. And so this is Abigail Davis, and you are a fourth grader at Dodge. And I know some of the things that you're involved in is the broadcasting team and robotics. So do you want to tell us about that? Sure. Which one should I tell you about first? So broadcast. It's basically our morning news. Everyone has a part. Some, some parts we do live, but some parts we are recording. My part is recorded because we have to do a laughing sound. And behind the scenes, there's a blue screen and a green screen. The green screen is for the weather, and the blue screen is for the main anchors and pretty much everyone else besides the weather. And you're the comedian, so tell yeah. us a joke. What do you get when you throw a lot of books into the ocean? Uh, I don't know, what? A tidal wave. <laughs> That's funny. Do you come up with your own jokes? No, we'll, we'll get to them. That's pretty funny though. I bet kids love that part of it. And so one of the good things that you do too, or lots of the good things I've read, are some community involvement projects. So um, tell us about those. So our, every year our school does like a can drive, food drive, a toy drive every year to, year to donate and whoever well with our cans hats whoever raises whichever grade raises the most gets a prize I think uh-huh so how'd y'all do did you do pretty good fourth grade didn't do pretty good but, last but you helped right and then you were telling me about something that you're doing today at school where you're going to um, do a project with cereal boxes. Our kindness challenge? Yes, tell us about that. So basically, we collected cereal boxes and we decorated with ways that are showing kindness. And then today, this afternoon, we're going to line them up in the gym and we're gonna do the domino effect. And that shows how one act of kindness can lead to another act of kindness. And that's one good thing that we look for when we're doing the Learning Leading Awards, are students who are kind and who help their schools. So do you think that it's important for kids to be kind? Definitely. If you want to make friends and make a good leader, mm -hmm. definitely. So do you feel like the people in, at your school are kind? Yes. Yes. So you think that's something our teachers teach you to do, to be kind? Yes, because we do leader and me a lot, so yeah. What is that? What is leader and me? Leader and me. 
Well, I can't really explain it. But all I know is we have this binder, uh -huh. which basically has like goals about you and a lot of thing, a lot of things that can help you with kindness or keeping track, mm -hmm. being responsible. Stuff like that. Those are all good traits for a leader, right? Definitely. <laughs> and you're only in fourth grade, but you're already learning how to be a leader. And I know one cool thing that you've done too is the recycling program. You started one, right? Tell us about that. So basically, we're collecting, we're going to collect stuff, and then we're going to bring it to the recycling center so we can recycle. Mm hmm. Do you think it has, that's important to, to help the earth? Well, depends. If you want a clean earth, then definitely. If you want a dirty earth, then not for you. I think I want a clean earth. What do you want? Clean, definitely. <laughs> so that's going to help you and your classmates and all the future kids of the world to have a clean earth. So yep. thank you for what you're doing at Dodge. We are so proud of you, um, you. as our learning leading winner. We look forward to seeing you and what, what you do for your remainder time in Mobile County Public Schools. We have to break for commercial, and when we come back, I'm going to introduce you to our middle school learning leading award winner from Clark Shaw. So stay tuned. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. Hello, I'm Jordan Clark, and I'm in the Health Service Academy at John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. My future career is to be an obstetrician gynecologist. With this academy, I'm learning firsthand from people already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job really makes me want to study hard and work harder towards my career goals. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. Visit mcpss.com. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. At any given time, trauma can happen. And how we deal with it. And how we make peace with it. Starts with me. With Project Thrive, I'm taking the pledge. I pledge to believe and support others experiencing trauma. Will you join Project Thrive and its team of partners who are working together to address issues of trauma. Take the pledge, take a stand, and let's make Mobile a trauma-informed community. We have 19 middle schools, and out of all the middle schools, you are selected the learning leading winner for the whole county. Wow. So congratulations. Yes. What do you think of that? Yes. She's helping, she's trying to to bring everybody up, you know, and that's that's what we look for. That's a leader, and 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 so she's got that sweetness, that kindness about her, or that she really cares about the other students. She really cares about this school. Like when we talk about student council things, she is all about what can we do to make this school better. So I mean, there's just no better example of that. She does all of those things and always is excellent in every class. We need leaders. I mean, we need, and they need to start at this age. They they really need each other to help each other to to lift up we've had so many hard things that we've been through and we just need people to be strong at this age and I think she's a really good example of that to be a leader means to lead people in the right direction like good peer pressure not um, helping people to better themselves not to worsen themselves That was so much fun. So today on Homeroom, we are talking about our learning leading winners. And joining us today, I have Madeline Borchert, who is our middle school learning leading a winner from Clark Shaw School of Math and Science and Technology. We just saw the video yes. where we surprised you in English class. Mm -hmm. What'd you think of that? I don't know. I was, I had no idea what was going on because my mom had told me that morning I had pictures for ambassadors. So I was just getting ready and then all of a sudden the, you come I'm like oh I, like, I didn't know to <laughs> we came in with the camera so, crew yes. and then I love because we did the video with you and you talked about being a leader is leading mm -hmm. people to do the right thing so how important is that so amazing you have to lead I think actions speak louder than words you need to lead by example um, 
if I don't work my hardest, why would I expect them to work their hardest, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have to kind of put myself out there. And you set a good example at Clark Shaw. I know mm -hmm. that you're in the student government and National yes. Honor Society. Are you president? I am president of NJHS or National Junior, National Honor, Junior Society. Honor Society. Mm -hmm. And so what makes you um, take on those leadership roles and do you feel like that's helping you? I mean, it prepares me for the future, I believe. If I want to be in the workplace and work around people, I need to know how to work with others and encourage them to do better. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And um, you play tennis? I do. Um, I was playing number one and number two um, varsity for Davidson last year, and then I'm going to Davidson next year, so I'll continue to play for them. So you're in middle school and you get to play for a high school team? Yes. What's that like? I mean, I think it's good because I get to meet all the people on the team so I can have some friends when I end up going to Davidson, but I really like it. So. And those are good activities, and you also mm -hmm. are very good in the academic realm. Yes. And I, I read that you won the science fair? Um, yes, I won first place at my school, and then I got a statistics award in um, county. So, What was your project on? Um, resting, trying to um, resist rest, kind of, like prevent it, I guess you could say. So. Mm -hmm. How'd you come up with that? Um, driving, just driving on the way to school, and I saw a lot of signs resting, so I thought, you know what, we can prevent this without having to paint over it, because paint is very, you know, expensive, mm -hmm. so. That's really cool. And then Girl Scouts, tell us about that. Um, yes, I'm planning on doing a gold award in the future. I already have a silver award, which is 50 hours, and then a bronze award, which, which is 25. And for my um, gold award, it's personal, it has to be 100 hours. And I'm thinking about planting flowers on the side because those will continue to, um, side on the road, they will continue to um, be there in the future. Yeah, so. a lasting impact. Yes. Because that's one thing with scouting is they promote that community service, yes. right? Do you think it's important for kids to get involved in their communities? Oh, yes, because um, you always will need to in the future, and you want to leave behind something good when you leave the earth. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to... Um, leave behind nothing for my future generations to have. I want to make this earth a better place for them. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that Abigail just said too, mm -hmm. like it's, it's important that we all do our part to take care yes. of the earth. And you think that besides helping the earth, you think it's important for kids to get involved in their communities and just be those positive yes, impacts. Yes, um, again, good peer pressure, like I said on the video, you want others to follow in your footsteps. We don't want to have all the negative energy around, we need the positive more. Mm -hmm. I agree because it seems like there's so much negative. Yes. And um, that's why I love when we go into a school, like when we went into Clark Shaw that day mm -hmm. and, and met you and your classmates, you are positive. And you think that's important for grown ups to see? Yes, because even people who are older than us, they can always change to be positive. There's no, you have to be negative for the rest of your life. You need to mm -hmm. put yourself out there. So. That's so true. That's why mm -hmm. I always say if I'm having a bad day, I go to a school. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you want to do when you grow up, when you graduate? Um, I'm thinking about being a physicist because it includes math and science, which are my favorite subjects, and just being able to understand and do things that um, haven't been understood before. So. Mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool. That'll take a lot of college, right? Yes. So I'll go to college and then go to grad school and then see where it goes And then from go there. from there. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And so do you have any advice for your fellow students about what they can do to be leaders in their schools? Again, they need to lead by example. They need to work their hardest, um, study. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. That's pretty good. Yeah. And I think that you're a great example of all of that. Mm -hmm. And we are so proud of what you've done at Clark Shaw. And we look forward to following you at Davidson to see what mm -hmm. you do there. And so congratulations on your award. Thank you. We have to break for commercial. But when we come back, we're going to meet our two high school learning leading award winners. They come from BC Rain and Citronelle. So stay tuned for Homeroom. Hi, I'm Renee Phillips, Director of Communication for Mobile County Public Schools and your host of Homeroom. I invite you to join us as we learn about the great things happening in our schools across the county. On Homeroom, you get to meet students and educators who are in our schools every day doing wonderful things. Join us as we take an in-depth look at their stories, issues, people, and policies of the Mobile County Public Schools. That's Homeroom. You can find it weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network. I have known since I was in fourth grade that I was going to be a teacher. I really just truly enjoy coming to work every day and working with different sets of kids and just watching them grow and learn. I couldn't see myself doing anything other than teaching children, being a part of children's lives, being able to inspire them in a way that some people just 
aren't able to do and to know that every day is a new day, a new opportunity to make a difference in the child's life means everything to me. It's a fact. Bullying happens. Bullying can lead to serious physical and emotional pain. But there are some things you can do to prevent or stop it. Stand up for the person who's being bullied. Let the bully know that it's not cool to pick on others. Take action by reporting the bully to a teacher or principal. In the end, when you help someone who's being bullied, you are also helping yourself. Well, Jordan, you know, every day you bring your best to the classroom. You're always excited. You're always ready to learn. And you inspire the other students in the classroom to do their best. And so it's just a pleasure to have you in my choir program, and it's a pleasure to have you at BC Green High School. We're so proud of you, and we want you to keep up the good work. I mean, words cannot express how my gratitude is right now. I mean, I, you surprised me. <laughs> and I'm never, I'm never the one to get surprised. I'm always the surpriser. So, you know, this is just, I mean, an amazing award, and I'm just so grateful for MCPSS. And grateful for you to take the time to come out here at BC Rain and present me with this award. I love when we can recognize our students. And that's what we're doing today on Homeroom is I am introducing you to our learning leading award winners from our elementary, middle, and high schools. These students exemplify our slogan of learning today, leading tomorrow. And you just saw Jordan Guyton, who's a sophomore at BC Same. Rain High School here. He is joining us in the studio. Hello, Jordan. How are you doing, Miss Renee? <laughs> I'm good. Yes, and so I remember meeting you when you were in middle school. Yes. And I was so impressed because you spoke in front of about 7,000 people yes, at the Teacher Institute. Yes, and, and you weren't shy at all. You know, that was a moment for me that I think I was really waiting on. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be able to speak in front of a large crowd, you know, being able to show my religion. And that's a blessing. I think that was really an honor to me. And I want to personally thank Superintendent Threggio for allowing me to do that. And you were brave standing in front of that crowd. <laughs> and you've continued to be brave throughout high school. Yes, and I know you've done a lot of cool things there. And one thing is being on the Superintendent Student Advisory Council. So you yes, get to meet with the superintendent and yes, talk to him. Yes. So tell us what that's been like. Well, honestly, when my principal first told me um, the great news, he called me to a meeting. And so it caught me totally off guard. And he was like, well, you're meeting with the superintendent out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, did you just tell me with the superintendent? You know, every month, and Superintendent Threggill has shown his, I mean, very hospitable. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity. He loves meeting with the high school kids and getting your input. Do you feel like he's been listening to you guys? Yes, and he definitely has. He definitely has. He listens and he applies. So yeah. grateful. And you get to meet kids from other schools. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I met, met a lot of people. I mm -hmm. mean, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And one thing that is super impressive as well is that you wrote a book when you were 14. <laughs> so it's called Black Queen to, Black about your Queen. grandmother. Yes. You want to tell us about that? Well, actually, it was a two page poem at first. Now, it was really, I started writing it before the pandemic. And so I said, well, you know what? My friends were encouraging me to continue to make it a book, Jordan. I said, well, okay, I never thought about that. So I kept going, and God had just allowed me and allowed the book to prosper. And so it was technically about my grandmother, as you stated, my great, great, great grandmother, oh, wow. Betsy Cozy. And so she was not a slave, as I normally say, but the woman in the book showed courageous. She was very courageous, authentic, and just true, and standing firm on faith. So what inspired you to write it? What inspired me to write it was really my grandmother, mm -hmm. um, my nana, yeah, my mom, and I mean, they were encouraging me, Jordan, it's almost done. There were days I was like, ooh, I'm so tired. <laughs> but God had given me strength. So how many so, pages is it? It's 487 oh pages. Oh my goodness, it's long. <laughs> <laughs> it is long. So did you have it actually published? Or can people buy copies or yes, get copies? How do you do that? You can buy it from Amazon, Barnes uh -huh. & Noble, Books A Million. It's online. You can go in the store. So when you tell people I'm an author, or you may not ever tell them that, but do you, what do they think? Um, they, you know, they're just like, well, my friends, you know, they always say, well, Jordan, you're, you're, you know, you're the author, this and that and third. But I always tell people, remain humble. 
Mm -hmm. Remain humble because the more you're humble, the more God blesses you. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think of that. And that's a good quality of a leader, isn't yes, it? Don't you think? Yes, Why do you think it's important to be humble? It's important to be humble because when you show yourself as very snobby, then people are like, oh, I don't, you know, that's not really a leader. Being a leader, I always say, when you're going through things, I always think of three Ps. Prayer perseveres pain. Mm -hmm. And so whatever I do, I pray. I talk to God, my family, my mom, my sister, my nana. And so it is important to stay, stay prayerful. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And you sing. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yes, ma'am. I sing in the choir. I, I was younger in the church, and so I would lead devotion. I remember my first my first time singing in the church. I was a little nervous, mm -hmm. but God had gotten me through it. Um, and I led a hymn called mm -hmm. "God Milled by Great Jehovah." That was my first song in the church. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was like, I'm going to join the choir. <laughs> and I joined the choir and. The rest is history. So do you sing with other teenagers or with yes, the grown-ups? Yes, ma'am. I'm uh -huh. actually at, in Ben C. Rain's choral department. That's the best choir in MCPSS. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, You're not biased. Right. Uh, I've heard them. They're very good. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Reverend Fry is our choral uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. He's wonderful. I mean, he's, I mean, actually, I was scheduled to go to Murphy. Okay. But he convinced my mom, bring Jordan to B.C. Rain. Mm -hmm. And it's been amazing. My stay here is amazing. And is that another way to reach people is through music and the yes, arts? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, music is universal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always, my choir teacher, Reverend Fry, says, we may not agree on politics, government, on a lot of issues, um, environmental issues, but one thing we can agree on is music. Music brings people together. That is great. I love that you're bringing people together at such an early age, and I think we can all agree that you are a great leader, God and we're you. proud of you. Thank you. So we have to break for commercial, but when we come back, I'm going to introduce you to our other high school winner from Citronelle. So stay tuned for Homeroom. When parents are involved in school, you get more of this and less of this. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. We're looking for Miss Marissa. Uh-oh, Marissa. Is that you? Hi. <laughs> Come on up here. We have a little surprise for you. You have uh, been awarded the Learning Leading Student of the Year for Mobile County Public High Schools. Uh, there are 13 high schools in the county, as we know, and you were selected as the top Learning Leading Student. Thank you. <laughs> So whenever we say she is a well-rounded student, she is the athlete who does everything expected of her and more, and that student as well, who continually pushes herself to go beyond what is even just the maximum requirement. She says, I'm gonna go and exceed that. I feel like a great leader should lead by example. That's always my biggest thing. I don't wanna be a hypocrite. I don't wanna tell my teammates or my classmates to not do something and then I go and do the same thing because I know that they're gonna look at me differently. And so I just like to lead by example and if I tell someone not to do anything, then I'm not gonna go do that myself. <laughs> And joining us is Marissa Wilson, who you just saw in the video. She is about to graduate from Citronelle High School. Yes, ma'am. So congratulations. Thank you. Are you excited about graduation? I am. I love my city. I love the people, but I'm ready for a new atmosphere, and I'm ready to get out into the world. And I know you've had a great time at Citronelle High School. Now tell us what it was like that day when we surprised you in your classroom to tell you you had won this award. 
It was a great feeling to be surrounded by my friends and my peers and get to see my principal and my teachers all so excited for me. And that's the day that I also found out that I was the valedictorian. So that was just a really good payoff. A good day. <laughs> yes. And so becoming valedictorian doesn't happen overnight. It's something you had to work for for four years. Yes, so how, how was that? How much work did you put into that? Well, really, I would say that I've worked for it my whole life. I've kept straight A's my whole life. That's just always been something that's been drilled into my brain, my work ethic. Mm -hmm. So it was hard. I would love to say that it was just this easy thing, but it definitely wasn't. There were times when I thought, wow, how am I going to make it through this? But I'm glad that I persevered. And like I said, that all my hard work is paying off. Right. And um, did you have a hardest class? Yes. Miss Roseanne Bird at Central High School. I've had her for three classes, but I would say the AP U.S. History has been my hardest class that I've ever taken. But do you feel like you accomplished a lot, learned a lot in there? I definitely do. Mm -hmm. The workload was very large, but the payoff was very great. And you've been successful academically, but also athletically. So tell us about being captain of the cheerleading squad. It was a big shocker whenever I found out that I was the captain because I received co-captain of the same cheer squad last year and normally whenever you get co-captain you don't get captain. Mm -hmm. But I'm very grateful that my friends voted me and I enjoyed spending the Friday night lights under at Citronelle. Yes. And I, it's such a great atmosphere for football there because everyone, like I said, knows each other and they have a good time. So was that a great way to spend your senior year? Yes, ma'am. It definitely was. And then you also play softball? I do. I play shortstop and this was my very last season ever playing and it's a sad thing, but I really enjoyed this last season. And bowling. Tell us about that. Oh, yes. <laughs> so my school we don't really take bowling that seriously, but it's just a fun time for us to go out, play a few games of bowling, and then go out to eat afterwards and fellowship. All right, and that's important for a teenager, right? Yes, to it have those friends is. and yes. those positive influences. And speaking of that, you were a positive influence on young cheerleaders because I understand that you volunteered and, and taught younger students how to cheer, right? Yes, ma'am, I did. What was that like? It was a challenge because I had so much stuff on my plate, but I'm so glad that I did it. I love investing my time into the younger generation, letting them know that just because you're from a small town, it doesn't mean that you can't do great things and encouraging them to grow up and be the best version of themselves. That's great. So tell us, what are you going to do after you graduate? In the fall, I plan to attend the University of Alabama and pursue a degree in public health in order to become a physician's assistant. Oh, that's great. Thank you. And so one final question I have for you is what advice do you have for your fellow graduates? Well, I was going to save it for my graduation speech, but I guess I'll tell y'all now. If I had one piece of advice, it would be to never let the size of your hometown determine the size of your dreams. Go out into the world, do big things, and make the most of every single moment that you get. That is fantastic, and we are so proud of you and the big things that you have done at Citronelle, and we look forward to hearing about your successes at the University of Alabama and beyond. Thank you. So that's all the time that we have for Homeroom, but thank you so much for joining us as we have celebrated our learning leading students, and we'll see you next time on Homeroom.